بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم جود مورنينج اكزاكتلي جاسمين ما شاء الله لماذا نائمون او نائمين لا نائمون بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن والاه اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا إنك سميع مجيب الدعاء اللهم أني أعوذ بك من علم لا ينفع وقلب لا يخشع ونفس لا تشبع ودعاء لا يسمع ربنا لا تزق قلوبنا بعد إذ هديتنا وهب لنا من لدنك رحمة إنك أنت الوهاب رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقد Welcome back, everyone. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. This is our first um, week of eight weeks, inshallah. We're going to be covering, you may wonder why why this topic. Does anyone think, has anyone thought, why did I choose this topic? And of course, we know what we believe in. Why? Basics, why? So we understand. Yeah. Any other reason? Greedy, mashallah. So everybody is perfect here. Well, if you are in my shoes or you are where I am, as time goes by, the questions that comes to us, and I'm sure if you speak to any sheikh, will tell you the same thing, has changed dramatically, regardless of the age. Like 10 years ago, 15 years ago, the questions comes from the youth, the questions comes from mother, it's completely different in these days. I don't want to say we are going through crisis, it's the whole world going through crisis, but we Muslims, unfortunately, are getting affected. And this is one of the issues of the internet, and we are all living as if we are living in a one country or one home. The issue of belief, and I need the mothers to open their mind and hearts before the youth is an issue the youth are suffering from and not very young also. The basics that when we were growing up, we never thought about even, not even doubt or a talk or question is the norm, is the norm. People are doubting everything. And if you, have, if you don't know about it, then talk to your daughters and be realistic because if you are going to deny it, it's there. Nothing is going to change. And I'm not trying to scare you. I need all of us to be aware because how we will address a problem or solve a problem unless we know there is a problem and we know what is the problem. If I'm going to say, no, it's not in my house, I am going to tell you then you're not living in the world. I met a 17, 16 years old that last weekend. I was out of town. And this is a beautiful soul. She looked at me and says, and I'm, Wallah, this is her word. She says, everyone in my school tried the drugs in the bathroom. Everyone. I said, everyone. She said, everyone. And I didn't want to ask her because I don't want to know the answer. So we need all to be aware because this is what our youth are getting exposed to. You like it, you don't like it, it's reality. It's reality. It's everywhere. It's being brought up as this is the norm, this is the beauty, this is the, this, then you can fit in easily. All these words, you hear it. And the second thing is actually the faith. Faith. People make fun. I had youth come to me and said they make fun of me. A, a beautiful soul. I could, I mean, I should have taken her permission, took her picture. She was sitting exactly this on the floor. Yeah, Jazakallah khair. And, uh, you look at this girl and you say, this girl, mashallah, I was like, where, where is your mom? I want to meet your mom. This is all last weekend. And then she said, can I talk to you? And I was like, I know when, they, when a youth want to talk to you alone, there is a major issue. She doesn't want anyone. And then I said, sure. So we walked out, exactly, walked out of the masjid. She looked at me and starts crying and says, I'm struggling. And this is, if you look at her, you think this girl, mashallah, I said, struggling with what? She's struggling with my faith. SubhanAllah, and I planned this before I talked to this girl. You look at her, she's an angel. She said, I'm the only one in the school. The only one in the school looks like this. 
Now, this is youth. Don't you think the older is better? No. If you work is an issue, if you don't work is an issue, because the, the media, the TV, everything is bombarding us with what we all grew up with. Literally, yesterday I had this request from someone is like they wanted to inter interview me. And, and the question she asked, and I'm so glad she asked, and I was like, I don't think I can do that because I'm not going to compromise my dean to please people. She said, but we need to be inclusive. I said, then I'm not the right person. So you all need to wake up, and I'm going to take absolutely, I'm going to speak very basics. I'm not going to speak aqidah class to the um, scholars or to the students of knowledge. I'm going to talk to us all. People live in this day and age, August 2022, in the Western world, in all what's around us and all the distractions we are having. And the first question is, what do we believe in as Muslims? Anybody have asked you this question wherever you are? at work, in school. What do we believe in? Can anyone answer me? Because I want you to talk to me. Yes, please. One creator. One. One, I love the one, because the one has many names and attributes. So we believe in one, in the one. Not in one, in the one. And this is basically what our Rasulullah taught us in a very famous hadith. I'm sure everybody in this room, if you don't know what you've heard about it, what is its hadith called? Huh? It has a name. Don't be scared. It's okay if you're wrong. It's okay. We're learning. What is the big deal? Huh? Anybody? Hadith Jibreel, they call it. When Sayyidina Jibreel, Rasulullah was sitting in the masjid, this hadith narrated by Sayyidina Umar, he was sitting in the masjid, and then they all were sitting, Sayyidina Umar saying, Dakhala alayna, a man came in, Shadidu bayad al wajh, Shadidu bayad al thiyab. He was. He looks very white and dressed very white. He doesn't look like a traveler, and no one of us know him. So who's this man? And then he came and sat, described his sitting exactly his knees next to the knees of in front of the knees of Rasulullah sallam. And he said, "Ya Muhammad." And then he said, "Ajibna." He calls him by his name, "Ya Muhammad." And then he asked him the basics. Akhbirni an al Islam. You all know this hadith, right? What is Islam? And then the five pillars of Islam. And then he said, Akhbirni an al iman. What do we believe in? And he said, And to mean Billah, the one you believe in Allah, right? Well, Malaika, well, Kutub, books, angels, books, Nabiyin, and then the day of judgment and the destiny, good or not good for us, or what we perceive. And then he said, Akhbirni an al ihsan. Tell me what is excellence, what is ihsan? which you all know. You worship Allah as if you are seeing him, and if you don't see him, he sees you. Why I'm saying this? Because when he left, when he left the Sahaba out of their adab and etiquette with the Rasul, they didn't utter a word. If this is me and you're like, who is this person? Why you are asking? What does that mean? Nothing. And then say, Rasul turned to Sayyidina Umar and says, is Jibreel came to teach you your religion. Jibreel came to teach you your religion. So what is Islam? What do I believe in? I believe in things here and I do things. And the first thing we need to believe in is the one. Now if I ask you who's Allah and don't answer me answers you have memorized it in school. I want an answer from your heart. So when you talk to them, you can give it to them. Who's Allah? That's translation, Ya Jasmine, God. And I actually, even with my non-Muslim friends, I always use the word Allah. Because for us, this is unique. Everyone else call him God, but for us, we call him Allah. And they, get, and they get it very easily. All my friends down learned, oh, Allah. Alhamdulillah. Who is he? Who is Allah? Man who Allah? If anyone asks you, what do you say? I can't hear somebody say. Okay, so you're going to start saying his names, right? The creator, right? The, the sustainer, the most merciful, the benevolence. The, and you go all the way in the names. Does that move you? 
let, let me just, I want you to hear this. When I say Allah, does the name move you? Really? You start a little bit, ah. You start thinking. Uh, I change, I sit differently. I put my hijab different. Or Allah. It's all questions I'm throwing it to you because I need you to start rethinking. Literally, we need to rethink. We as Muslims, really, who are we? And what's our relationship with Allah? And if we don't know him, we have no relationship with him. So you all know the end of Surah Al-Baqarah, right? At least you've all heard about it. Amana Rasulu. This is also what we believe in. The last two verses of Surah Al-Baqarah, the cow. Amana Rasulu. The Rasul, alayhi salatu wasalam, believed in what? Bima unzid ilayhim al-Rabbi wal-Mu'minun. A Rasul, alayhi salatu wasalam, believed in what has been sent to him from his Lord and all the believers. The believers is you and me. Kullun. Each one. I'm translating the verse. Kullun. Each one of us, not them, mu'minun. If you say, I am a believer, then yes, we are. Amana billahi, believed in Allah. Wal malaika, angels. Wal kitabi, wal nabiyi. Right? And then you know the rest of the verse. Why I'm sharing this verse with you? There is only two verses in the Quran that was revealed not on this earth. Not on this earth. Does anyone know? Anybody? Yes. I can't hear you. So when Rasulullah went, went in his night journey, right? Night journey and then ascend to the heavens. What was revealed to him? And the seven heaven. The seven heaven. So we have seven. The seven is where everything stops. Everything comes from earth, goes up, stops there. And everything comes from the from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala stops there. It's like a station. The station then like a filter goes up and goes down. So at that level, what was revealed? What I just re recited to you. Only verse in the Quran, the two last ayat of Surah Al-Baqarah, the last two verses of the Surah Al-Baqarah was revealed from Allah there. Why? I always wonder why. I mean, there's so many other verses in the Quran. Next week, I'm going to share with you about Allah. But why this one? And the virtues of these two verses. There is about 10 hadith about the virtues of these two verses of the Quran. Do you know that? Not Surah Al-Fatiha. The last two verses of Surah Al-Baqarah. And Rasulullah Wasallam, one, one of the hadith, he said, whomsoever read these two every night, before he or she sleeps, kafata, it's enough. Suffice. What's kafata? When you say, I have enough, I'm done. What does that mean? I don't need anything else. You probably have nothing, but you have everything you need. Or maybe you don't have anything, but Allah doesn't make you feel you need. That's one of the virtues of it. Why? What is so special about it? You need to read it. Go back and read it. Because that's what I and you need to keep reminding myself that this is what, what makes me a Muslim. What makes me different than everybody else outside is not only the way I look. The way I look or the way I pray is a result of what I believe in. So who is Allah? How do I know he exists? This is a very common question. Have you ever had this, someone ask you this question? If you go to new Muslims, that's a very common question. How do you know Allah exists? Who can answer me? Don't be scared. It's okay. You want to come in the front? Those in the back? There's a lot of space in the front. How do you know Allah exists? Yeah? So you look, you look at the creation, his creation, around me and in me. That's that's for sure. Yalla ya Jasmine, tafaddali.
Okay, so the Quran, and we're gonna come to one of the classes will be about the whole Quran, all about the Quran. We're gonna go through these Aman al Rasul, what we believe in as, as Muslims, we're gonna go through it one by one. We need to resuscitate, I call it, resuscitate our deen and resuscitate our knowledge. Even if they are basics, I need to keep reminding myself, learn, be grounded in the knowledge, and then I can teach. I'm not talking about here. I'm teaching inside the house and outside the house. Each individual, each human being, Allah created, they know there is a creator, a superpower, a something, very few. But the majority, if you ask them, what do they tell you? Mother nature, something that is there, it's, it's superpower. And then if they are religious, they will call him according to what they believe in. What did Allah teaches you and me or taught me and you in the Quran? Each one of us born, born, when the baby comes out with this engraved in us. Allah said this to Rasul in Surah Al-Rum, the Roman. He said, فَأَقِمْ وَجْهَكَ لِلْدِينِ حَنِيفًا Set forth your face straight for this deen, Hanifa, meaning you worship only one. And then he's telling him, Fitrat, and, Fitrat Allah, this is how all we are created. La tabdila li khalqillah, this is not going to change. We all know there is something more than you and me. And a Rasul said that, Kullu mawlud yuladu ala al fitra. Every newborn is she or he created or born with the fitrah, with the natural instinct, natural instinct. You know how do you know you have a natural instinct? Can anybody tell me? Even the non-believer. When you, when you are scared, what do you say? Oh my God, what is that? Why? Oh my gosh. And then it depends what they believe in. Oh Jesus. So you know there is something more than you and me. It just doesn't, even my mind doesn't accept it. It's you and me. Allah said, if you tell them, ask them, who created heaven and earth? They will answer you saying Allah. And who's answering? Non-believers. We all know that. And then when the newborn is born, then his parents change him. That's what the hadith of Rasul said. For our Abawahu parents, you have Widana, they make him Jews, you know, Sirana, they make him Christian, or you Majisana, they make him Majusi, basically worship the fire. But in general, all of us, all of us, and I'll give you one example. This is actually one of the best things I was taught, one of the best things I was taught to strengthen your connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I was taught the following. When you feel you're weak and distant from Allah, and you live, alhamdulillah, in a city close to the ocean, go to the ocean and think of yourself in the middle of the ocean, alone, not in a boat. They dropped you, and you're hanging to only a piece of wood. What are you going to say at that moment? What are you going to say? All of us, all of us, see, I can, you all are saying it. What are we going to say? Ya Allah, Ya Allah. And I was reading a book preparing for this, and he gave another example, actually, the author. He said, remember that plane? When they were in that plane and there was so much turbulences, everybody in that plane looked like someone had a, like, a videotape. Everybody was saying, Ya Allah, because you're up there. What does that teach me? It's in me. It's natural. What happens then? If it is in me and it is natural, what happens? What changed? Think with me, what changed? It's there, in me. When I am in need, Ya Allah. When I'm sick, Ya Allah. When, I, when my car doesn't work and the phone is dead, Ya Allah. When, when there is no means to rely on, immediately we all go, Ya Allah, Ya Allah. Even the youth, Wallahi. You know, when they want to tell you something and they want to really make their point, like, wallahi. I was like, okay, alhamdulillah, at least there is wallahi. That's good. 
What does that tell you? It's in me, alhamdulillah. Why it's weaker and weaker and weaker, and even I'm doubting. Why? You're too quiet. What, say that again. So environmental condition, blaming the others. That's not a good start. You always blame yourself first. Because there is people who, who are exposed to the same environmental changes and they are solid like a rock. So what is the issue? It's not my priority. I am connected with him, but connected here, but not even deep here. Here, I have no idea. It depends. What is my day? Where I am in my life? It's Ramadan, I'm fasting, uh, I am going for vacation. We go up and down. Am I correct? Right? If I am here, I'm different. If I go back home, I'm different. If I'm in Mecca, I'm different. If I'm in vacation in Hawaii, I'm different. So it's not people. People is an influence. But number one is me. Me. So two things we need to start working on, all of us. And if you have it, alhamdulillah, ذكر فإن الذكرة تنفع المؤمنين. Remind them. Reminder, benefit the believers. If you already are very comfortable, alhamdulillah. But most of us are not there. Or not there constantly. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asked this question. There's so many questions in the Quran with no answer. One of them is actually in Surah Al-Qur. And Allah says, أَمْ خُلِقُوا مِنْ غَيْرِ شَيْءٍ أَمْ هُمُ الْخَالِقُونَ were they created from something different? Or maybe they created? Question mark. Where is the answer? Where is the answer? You are too quiet. I don't know why. <laughs> because the answer is, of course, we didn't create ourselves. Right? If you go back and back and back and back, and I'll give you at the end a couple of stories, which inshallah will wake you up and it will make you think even more. But everything, if you go back and back and back and back, has an origin. So an Arabi, a Bedouin, Bedouin. Bedouin usually is like people who don't have a lot of education, but they have natural instinct. And they asked him, how do you know Allah is there? How do you know Allah exists? You know what he said? It's beautiful. He said, al ba'ratu تدل على البعير والأثر يدل على المسير سماء ذات أبراج وأرض ذات أفلاج ألا تدل على العليم الخبير Let me translate This is a Bedouin has no education Bedouin is sometimes even they don't know how to read and write but they are very sharp because they spend a lot of time alone and outside so they reflect on the creation so they asked him how do you know Allah exists you know, it's like, you're a Bedouin, you didn't read much, you don't know much. Simple. See what he said. He said, al ba'aratu tadullu ala al ba'ir. When you see a dung, please forgive me, this indicates or shows that there was a camel. Wal atharu yadullu ala al masir. When I walk and I see footsteps or footprints, that means what? That somebody was walking. Simple. Then he said, now, Sama'un datu abaraj, sky full of stars, wa arubun datu aflaj, and an earth full of path for us. Ala tadullu ala al-alim al-khabir? Isn't that enough to tell me there is all-knowing Almighty? What is that teaches you and me? How do I become this, this Bedouin? What is, what does he have and I don't. He doesn't have a cell phone and spend all his time distracted. He spend his time focusing, focusing, reflecting, seeing an answered simple question, simple answer. Why do I need to resuscitate my relationship with Allah? Because everything else he wants me to do, unless I know who is he, it's very difficult. And let's be all honest. 
whether it's how I get dressed, whether I the salah, whether don't do this and don't do that and don't fit in, and I don't mind, I'm different, unless I know who is he. So who is he? Is he. Do you know what's the name Allah mean? Wallahi, I'm asking you basic questions, right? Yani we learned this when we were five years of old age. What, what, what does the name Allah mean? Don't tell me Khaliq wal Bara. That's his name's other name. What does the name Allah mean? Al Ilah. What does that mean? What does Ilah mean? The origin is Ilah. You're right. Allah, origin is Ilah. Alif, Lam, Ha. And then you put Alif, Lam on it, it becomes Allah. What does it mean? Al Ma'bud. The one that we, the only one that should be worshipped. Or I add worthy of worship. Worthy of worship. You know when you love someone and the people tell you, why do you love him or her? What do you say? They deserve it. You don't know what they did to me. You, know how, you don't know how they make me feel. So of course I love them. How can I not? Allah is al-ma'bud, is the only one worthy of me giving him, and please pay attention to this, giving him my time, my feelings, my love, my energy, my fear, my attachment, my longing. The only one worthy. Everybody else, all of us are. And there's a beautiful... Uh, now it just came to my mind, poem uh, 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 says the meaning of kun aqila, be smart and look around you. Everyone around you is nothing and we're created from nothing. I, just, I don't remember the Arabic one, but it's beautiful. It's, if you look around us, لا أملك لنفسي ضرا ولا نفعا الرسول عليه الصلاة والسلام said I can't bring any good to myself or any harm and I cannot push any harm from you or I cannot bring any good you're going to say yes you can I said when Allah wills because I can do the same thing for three people one works and the two doesn't why? I'm the same person and it's the same thing so Imam Abu Hanifa and this is I want you to remember in case someone asked you he was famous for debates. You know that? <clears throat> he debated people with wrong beliefs and he debated people who don't believe, period. So this is at the time of Al-Abbas, Abu Ja'far al-Mansur. Those who doesn't believe, they came to him and he said, get us someone. This is, this is how they say it, if you read the story. Get us someone who can convince us that there is a creator, that there is Allah. And he said, I know only one person, is Abu Hanifa. So he called him, says, yeah, he says, okay, let's make an, a time. We'll make an appointment. And that's going to be this time. And they lived in Baghdad. So he said, on the <clears throat> bank of the river, we will meet at this time. So everybody was there. All those who don't believe. And the Khalifa. And Abu Hanifa didn't show up. He was not there. They waited. He didn't show up. And the, the, the Khalifa starts to become very worried. I was like, what happened to him? So what did they start saying? See, he doesn't have a, a reason. That's why he didn't show up. That's not Abu Hanifa, that's you and me. So Abu Hanifa finally came in, late, late, just before Maghrib. And they said, why are you late? Now remember, he's debating people who don't believe in Allah. They think that this all created from nothing. And there is no creator. And he's trying to debate them. No words. So he said, well, I was on the other side of the river. And I was waiting for a boat. And there was no boat. And then suddenly, wood, a piece of wood came from the sky. And met another piece of wood in the river. And then suddenly came in hammer and came in nails, and they start working together. And then they made a boat, and then suddenly out of nowhere came in a paint, and the paint painted, and then finally the boat is ready, and I came to you. 
So he looks at him and says, are you making fun of us? Is that real? Do you think we are crazy? Come from the sky, piece of wood, and wood in the river. And he said, you didn't believe a boat can be made from nothing by itself. And you don't believe that all this around you was made of nothing? Then for sure there is a creator. Done. If we all, each one of us, look around us, and I highly recommend those of you who love animals, if you pay attention to animals, no way, wallahi la ilahu, no way you cannot believe. The, there is no way, and I have cats, and I learned a lot from cats, and even if you read some of the scholars, like Imam al-Junaid, he said, I learned how to be so observant of my actions by watching a cat, watching from a hole, looking at a hole in the wall, waiting for the mice. It's called muraqaba. And I, he said, I learned from the animal. So if you want to resuscitate your iman, resuscitate your basic belief, just spend five, 10 minutes without a phone, when you go hiking, when you go walking, when you go on the beach, when you go in any place, or if you are in the plane and you're in the window and you see the creation of Allah, just five minutes, look at the, like I just fly, flew two days ago, and subhanAllah was a clear sky, but full of clouds. So the plane above the cloud. And if you look at the cloud, it's like subhanAllah, Literally, Allah described them like mountains. He described them. And he sent down from clouds like mountains. And I was looking. Mountains, different, white. Some small, some big, some beautiful, some so smooth, some are not. And literally, I was like, Ya Allah, who are you? This cannot be done by me or you. If each one of us Spend two minutes, two minutes a day, two minutes a day, reflecting on something around you, and then see how is your relationship with Allah. What is your relationship with Allah? And the doubt is not there. Those who are in doubt, the main reason is those who are non-Muslims, they don't know. And part of it is my fault and yours. Please forgive me. Because we don't talk about it. We don't invite people to it. People, I mean the neighbor, the friend, the colleague, the uh, friend of your children. If you spend two minutes, two minutes daily, one of the things beautiful here is you see a lot of flowers. And again, this is the beauty of California. And then I always look at it and I remember a verse in Surah Al-An'am. In Allah faliqul habbi wa nawa. Allah split, split. Al-hab wa nawa. The hab is like the seed and the fruits. So sprouts came out of it. A month ago, if you had flowers, what did you see? Or if you buy a flower from the, uh, from the uh, shop, what do you see? You see it's small. You put it in water, right? At th three, four days, two days, what happens? This small becomes a flower. How is that? How does the flower know to open up? How does the flower know to direct itself to the sun? If you, put it, if you put your vase toward the sun, everything turned to the sun. If you have plants in the house, that's what they tell you. If the plant gets a little bit tilted, turn it. How does that mean? Who, who, who taught the plant this? Allah, يُعَرَفُ بِخَلْقِ That's how they teach you. Allah, you know him. Through his creation, he introduced himself to you and me. And I'm not talking about the Quran yet, this is next week, and not his names, this is next week. But he introduced himself to you and me through the creation. But we are too busy. Too busy. We don't pay attention to this. So, daily, two minutes, three minutes. And I'm not going to say read the Quran and reflect, we'll come to this later. But just look around you. Sunset. Sunset, the most beautiful scene you see here is the sunset. Wherever you drive, 
Right? Subhanallah. Where does the sun go? Don't tell me that turns will earth turn. This is, geo this is uh, physics. I know that. In reality, where does it go when I don't see it? It goes where? And when, when you see it, like in the last few minutes, it goes so quickly that and then it disappeared. Where does it go? Allah knows, of course. But what did he taught us? Where does it go? Did you think of that? And the sun walk, tajri, actually it's not walk, tajri, go um, run. And, and now the, the, the scholars tells you, yes, the, the, the sun run, tajri li mustaqarri laha, run to appointed place. This is the appointment of Al-Aziz, the might, Al-Alim, the all-knowing. This is in the Quran, Surah Yasin. The first thing I want to share with you today, this is what I wanted, Alhamdulillah, I think, I think Allah made it happen. I made a lot of dua. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala open your hearts to think differently. And don't take things for granted as my mom taught me, my grandmother, and then goes on without deep thinking and reflection. Man anta, ya Allah. Sometimes I ask this question and I'm not doubting. I just say, ya Allah, show me. Show me your, your majesty. He's not gonna show me. Because who asked to see Allah? Who asked to see Allah? Qala Rabbi arini anzur ilayk. Ya Allah, let me see you. Sayyidina Musa. Qala lan tarani. You're not gonna see me. Look at the mountain. Look at the mountain. Wait, and then you will see me. Allah, within a minute, made the mountain crash. And Musa right away fainted. If Allah will show us who is he, we will not be able to survive. And that's out of his rahmah. So let's think again about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Take your time. When you read the Quran, one name, we'll talk, talk about it next week, more about Allah, how he described himself in the Quran, how he introduced himself to you and, and to me. I was asked to finish early today because we need to empty this room at 7.30. Otherwise, they will not give us the, the room. No, I'm just kidding. But they said, please. They said, please, they didn't say that. So any questions? I'm going to end up here. If there is any question, go ahead. I think I shared with you almost everything I wanted to, um, um, to share. Oh, one question to the Imam Abu Hanifa. Ya Allah, how he answered. He said, um, and they, they asked him, so Allah was there before everything else? And he said, yes. And he said, how is that? Look at the answer. He said, what is before four? Answer. Three. Yeah. And then he said, what is before three? Two. And he said, what is before two? One. And, they, and he said, what is before one? Four. Nothing. And he said, numbers. And number one, there is nothing before. And the one who is the only one, do you want something before? And then they asked him and says, in which direction your Lord goes? Look at the questions. And what do you think he answered? Ya Allah, Ya Allah. And he said, he always answered with examples that makes people don't even answer because it's obvious. He said, okay, go and bring me a light, like a lantern. And they brought him a lantern and, and he said, turn it on. And he said, which direction the lantern is going? The light of the lantern, which direction is going? Everywhere. And he said, Allah is the light of the heavens and of the earth. Goes everywhere. This is what we all need again. We need to resuscitate, re revisit, rethink, reread, reread, read about him daily. Subhanallah, if you all, and I, again, I'm not meaning you, but I'm saying to myself, number one, how much time I spend in everything else in life, 
legitimate things, right? And I'm not going to say phone or, or social media, or Instagram, or all this, but everything else. But how much I spend with Allah, not by salah, the, the automatic thing we do, just to focus on him, just to know him, so to give my, my iman a boost. Because the more I think of Allah, the more I am stronger. And one last thing, and I will end up here. One of the things also I was taught, and I found it always helped me, especially in salah. I was taught, taught when you, I don't know why specifically in ruku'a, but definitely in ruku'a works more. He said, in ruku'a, as you are in ruku'a, think a second Allah is looking at you. Just a second, a fraction of a second. And then what will happen? You'll freeze. Try it, all of you. When you go for Subhana Rabbi al Azim, don't do it very quickly. And just think for a second Allah is looking at you. You'll freeze because he, we know Him. He's inside us. But Ghafirun, we're heedless. We're too busy. We're distracted. Everything else is more important. Rat race. By the time we go to bed, we didn't even know what we did. Let's take a pause, two, five minutes a day, and just let's go back and learn about Him. Subhana. Is He worthy? Is he worthy of my five minutes? Yes or no? Five minutes? وَمَا قَدَرُ اللَّهَ حَقَّ قَدْرِهِ And they have not given Allah his due rights. Three times Allah said in the Quran, مَا قَدَرُ اللَّهَ حَقَّ قَدْرِهِ They never give Allah his due right. They didn't know who is he. Subhana. Allahumma عَرِّفْنَا بِكْ يَا Allah. May Allah make us know him. And may Allah make us know us know his bounties not by taking them away and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us of the grateful that he makes us at least sit here and learn this and don't despair from the rahmah of Allah I always say this and I will end up with this don't despair even if this was too too much where am I I'm wait don't the fact he brought you here today the fact he made me think of this subject the fact he made it happen and made me speak he wants me to know him and he wants you to know him. Subhana. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik. Ashhadu an la ilaha illa ant. Astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk sallallahu ala sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa ashabi tasliman kathira. Any questions or comments? Yes, please. Ah, Jasmine. It's okay. Of course. How can you stop and make a painting? Yes. No, Allah, anything happens to us, Allah make it happen. So the question is, did he faint or Allah made him faint? Yeah. Isn't it incredible how one son can like bring up the whole world, but there's so many countries and so many states and like only one son? Ah, did you get that? There's so many countries and there is so many nations, but there's only one son. S-U-N, not S-O-N. One sun and one moon. But there's so many other stars. That's called reflection. That's called reflection. Every time we learn something from Jasmine, right? MashaAllah, tawarakallah. Anyone else? Yes, please. Yeah, there is a... Do you read Arabic? Yes, alhamdulillah. There is a beautiful book called Li'anna Kallah. Because you are Allah. It's actually a PDF, can download it. And it went almost viral, the book. لِأَنَّكَ Allah. And I'm glad you said this because I was actually reading it yesterday again. And the author dedicated the book to his mother. But he, he was saying why to his He didn't say to my mother first. He said to the one, when I was eight years of age, asked me, did you pray? How late? And he's saying this in the book. In the, and he said, I said, yes, and I was a liar. He didn't. She said, if you prayed or you didn't, he's seeing you. She was telling him, whether you prayed or you didn't pray, he saw you. See, she didn't tell you. She knew he didn't, subhanAllah. But she didn't want to tell him you're a liar. Who go and pray. And then he said, it's in the book, if you read it, it's in the first page. Then he said, I went and I prayed. And from that time, 
I am praying to you, mom. That's what he, to, meaning this book is to my mother. He chose a couple of the names of Allah, but the way he wrote it, beautiful. Literally, very nice. It's a very easy read. It's like this size, not too, too big. Any other question? No, I'm sorry. It's it, uh, sure in my other life, inshallah. <laughs> I'd love to. Actually, next week I'm taking some quotes from him in the Idn Yes, yes. Can't hear you. La Ali Al Afifi. If I'm Ali Afifi, yeah. If I'm remembering what it's a blue book. Blue, the, the cover is blue, and the written on, لِأَنَّكَ Allah. Any other question? This is weird. Really? Yes. I have a fan in me. That's okay? Yes, Allah has no gender, but we refer to him as he in a translation. Uh-huh. Because anything that is unknown is usually referred to as he. Now, now, now we get into the aqidah question. Because, but that's okay, because that's a common question, and it's a common point. Because when you say in the Arabic language, now you have to know this is Arabic. And when you use the feminine, it means woman. But if you use the masculine, it means man, could mean a woman, could mean the none. That's in the Arabic language. Like if you read Surah Al-An'am, those of you who read Arabic, if you want to know about Allah, how he introduced himself to us, it's all huwa. Huwa, huwa, huwa. But it's, he has no gender, subhanah. Anything that we human being are, Allah is not. In the creation in the form. So when I say Allah is Samia, Allah hears. Well, I hear too. Yes, but it's not the same. It's not the same. In one one verse, this is probably going to, uh, yani, inshallah, explain things. It's in Surah Al-Shura. لَيْسَ كَمِثْلِهِ شَيْءٍ الْبَصِيرِ Nothing. Look at the translation. If you know Arabic, you know it very clearly. Because the words, the the tools Allah used, laysa nafi ka mithlihi shay, two uh, tools for parables in the Arabic language. In the English, you translate nothing like the like of him. Nothing like the like of him. Nothing like Allah. So you say, I, I have a lot of mercy. Ah, nothing like Allah. Or I, I, I am so strong, nothing like Allah. I know everything, nothing like Allah. Let's, can, can we have somebody else, Jasmine, just for a second in case? Is that okay? Okay. Anyone else? I can't hear you, I'm sorry. Allah, and then you say, for example, Allahu la ilaha illahu. Because what they say, the name Allah is Ismu Alam. It is the name of Allah. Like your name is Sarah, for example. And then you say, which Sarah? You say, Sarah Muhammad Ali, and you put your father name. When you say Allah, it is his name. And then you say, Walillahi al-Asma'ul Husna. To Allah is the beautiful names. So you identified him, Subhana, And then you say, Allah Sami, Allah hearing, Allah sees, Allah uh, uh, capable, Allah is generous. But you always say Allah first. Is that clear? Alhamdulillah. MashaAllah, all upstairs. Any question from upstairs? I don't want to deprive you. Alhamdulillah. Anyone else? Yalla, ya Jasmine, the last one so we can finish. Alhamdulillah, we are on time. Yes. Does Allah judge animal? Does Allah judge animal? That's a good question. Does Allah judge animal? No. Okay, let's see. Bismillah. Who say yes? I, I, I'm coming to the door. No. <laughs> Who says yes? Allah will judge the animals. 
Allah will judge them. طيب, who says no? طيب, the majority, I don't know. طيب, this is a question of fiqh that will answer your point. Who is, which one of us, Allah will not take them accountable. Now you will learn. This is how you learn, by the opposite. Which one of us, which human being, Allah will not take them accountable? The people who are insane. They don't have, they're not in a state of mind. Why? Because they cannot differentiate between the good and the bad, and the harmful and the beneficial. And what Allah said, or he wants me and he doesn't. So will Allah take the animals accountable? However, that day, there is no injustice, in case you know that hadith, that even the two sheeps will stand in front of Allah, and one sheep will say, I want my right, Ya Allah, from her. She, uh, she took my right. She did injustice to me. Sheeps. Ya Wayli. All of us. So Allah will take us accountable because we have mind, wisdom, and ability to choose. And that's why angels have no problem. I wish I was angel or animal. Done. But Allah did not. He wanted me to karamna bani Adam. He elevated our status. He honored us. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. جزاكم الله خيرا سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك أشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت أستغفرك وأتوب إليك صلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه تسليما كثيرا بارك الله فيكم إلى رواد يوم. so if we can please move